Happy Doll Artist, Kim here from CustomDollBaby.com. Welcome to the wig making demo. Over uh, right before Christmas, um, one of my Christmas babies uh, was a toddler, Ariana by Reba Schick, with a custom made human hair wig. And I was in such a hurry to get her home in time for Christmas that I didn't record the full uh, demo. I just did a quick time lapse and that raised a lot of questions because uh, apparently a lot of you are interested in learning how to make wigs for your reborn dolls. So uh, thanks to the generosity of Nom Nom's creations, I have a victim that was donated to me for the sake of the demo. Um, she does beautiful work, um, has been following along with the videos as well. So this is her Rena that we are going to make a custom made wig for. Wig making is a great skill for any doll artist to have because frankly there aren't a whole lot of doll wigs out there depending on the size of your doll. In order to make a handmade custom wig all you need is wefted hair. And there are many many kinds and varieties of wefted hair available. If you go to your local beauty supply you'll see all kinds of synthetic and human hair options. You can even get mohair that has been sewn to a weft. So any hair that has been wefted can be used to make your homemade wig, which gives you a variety of colors and textures to choose from. To make your wig, you're gonna need your doll, at least one pack of your wefted hair of choice. This is a uh, yakky textured human hair in color 1B, which is a jet black. Not required, but very helpful is a closure. And you can buy your closure wherever you bought your hair if you went to a beauty supply store. So this one, I don't know if you can read it, it's a human hair closure. And what these things are, is this a tiny piece of lace mesh, similar to what's in the front of the wig that I'm wearing, wrapped around with hair wrapped around it. So what you get is this nice little hole that closes off and seals the crown of your wig very neatly. So I use this on the Ariana as well. Very, very convenient to have and they're not too hard to find. You're going to need some pins, a Prismacolor pencil, preferably one in the color of your hair. P6000 is recommended. For gluing your wigs. It's a very strong waterproof adhesive. It smells terrible though so you might want to do your gluing outside or at least in a well ventilated area. Before we begin let's first become a little more familiar with the anatomy of a wig. On the outside of the wig what you typically will find is your closure. So this one has a little hole here just like the closure that I showed you a part. This is what is called a thatched part, which I'll describe in more detail when we get to it. If you would like for your wig to be removable, um, you'll need a cap. I don't have a cap because we're just going to glue it directly to the doll. Now while we're looking at the inside of the cap, a few things that I wanted to point out is the spacing of the weft. So as you can see here, this cap has wefted hair sewn to it. So each one of these lines is the same as this weft of hair that we have. Now you'll notice as you make your way down the back of the wig, these get further and further apart from each other because you don't want the hair to be bulky in the back. However, at the front of the wig, and it's sewn so tightly you can't even see it, the uh, wefts are actually adjacent to each other. They're like right next to each other so that you can make that thatch part and not be able to see through the hair. So just something to keep in mind, space them out in the back, put them together in the front, and make sure they meet up to your closure. Another thing I wanna point out about a typical doll wig is that it doesn't follow the hairline. Um, a lot of doll wigs, actually, the cap will just sit right at the crown of the head and then the hair will dangle down to cover the face. 
This one, the cap is larger because it is a ten intended for a larger doll. But it doesn't go all the way down to the hairline. So when you're making your handmade wig, you do have the ability to create the cap as large as you want. Um, but a typical wig is not going to come that far down. So before we glue anything, I want to place the hair and make sure I like where it lands. So the first thing we're going to determine is how far down the head the hair is going to go. And this is where those pins come in. So make sure the doll you're working with, um, at least if you need to pin it, you want to make sure that it's a soft material that will tolerate the pins. I need to be able to clear the ear. So I'm going to start right above this ear. and just stick a pin in it to hold my place. I'm gonna wrap it around to the other ear and use as many pins as I need to hold that in place. Okay, so now we have to determine how far down we wanna come on the forehead. It's really up to you where you place it. So, however you want it to frame the head, I think when I'm rooting I would normally start the hairline about here, so I'm going to put the wig there. Okay, and meet it back up to that ear, and that is my first round. So now we're ready to do our remaining rounds. Remember, we're gonna space it out in the back, so you could put your second round right on top of the first one, but you'll use less hair, and you'll have a more natural style if you space it out a little in the back. So I'm gonna leave about a centimeter in between. Now, when I get to that ear, that's when I want the west to start touching again. The ear or even the temple. Now you might be able to see this better when I remove the wefts. So I'm going to drop my pen. So I've got my spacing here in the back but I don't want any spacing in the front. I'm gonna line it up right up against the weft that was there before. All the way to the temple. Drop my pin. Okay. And that's my second round. Now, by the time you get three or four rounds in, you want to determine where to put your closure. And your closure represents essentially the crown on your baby, so you want it to be centered. And roughly in the middle, so you can put it right on the long part of the head. Or you can put it up more. I think it looks best on a wig if it's on the flat part of the head, because this thing is a little bit bulky and it's gonna make it poke out a little bit. And that's also roughly where it was on the wig that I showed you. Okay, so that's my placement. I'm gonna get my pencil and make a little mark round the edge of the closure. So like I said, it's a lace circle. And I'm just making little marks so I know where I want to put it. Okay. So that's where we're going to place our closure. I need to have that mark because I don't want to go over it with wefts. So I'm going to keep making my rounds. Remember, leave a little bit of space in the back and make them flush in the front. And 
And we're pinning and not gluing at this stage because we want to make sure we like how it's going to look. And if you're doing a custom, um, maybe you want to send a picture to the mommy after you've pinned it and make sure she likes how it looks. But I can tell you that she's probably not going to like how it looks until it's been styled. Um, these wigs look horrible when you first make them. The hair is so shaggy. So you might want to <laughs> ask her to trust you and wait until the wig is complete before she sees it. Because seeing it in progress is going to stress her out. Make a space again. And how big these spaces are are really up to your preference. So I'm spacing them about a centimeter apart. Maybe you want them an inch apart. Maybe you want them a finger width apart. However you want to do it. It's totally up to you. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and place my closure. Okay, so now I can see what I'm doing. So there's a little bit of a lace overhang. I don't know if you can see that on the closure. So I wanna put that down before I finish placing my wefts because I want the wefts to cover that overhang. So I'm just gonna pin it right down in the middle for now. And work my way around, bringing it all the way flush to that closure. So I don't want any gap on the crown. Where the closure ends is where the wig begins. Okay, so hopefully now you can take a closer look. So we've got our closure piece that's sitting right on top here. I just have one pin holding that down. Underneath the closure is where I pinned my last set of wefts. Sorry for the coloring there. All the way down the front of the face. That's the front of her face. I have the wefts right next to each other. So back to back to back, there's no space. Well, it looks like there's space because of the way I'm pulling on it, but there isn't space. In the back though, there is space. So if you're making a wig for someone, um, you wanna make sure that they're not planning to do like pigtails or something because if they are, they're gonna see that spacing in the back. Any issues caused by that? would be to either paint the scalp a darker color, so paint the scalp to match the hair, typical doll making trick, 
you see on a lot of play dolls so that way when they separate it out it won't be as noticeable it won't be sort of black hair contrasted with white scalp the other thing you could do is do a thatched part where you know the customer is planning to put the pigtails and uh, I keep referring to that idea we're gonna talk about it a little bit later so this is my fully pinned on wig so at this point you want to give it a good look and see that you like it that you like where it ends that you like where it begins that you're okay with the thickness of it so if the wig is too thick you can always unpin it and go back over it again spacing out the hair more than you did the first time all right so you just give it a good look over and make sure you're pleased and if you are you're ready to move on to the next step so before i unpin the wig there are a few important things that i want to do um, the first is that I want to go through and make some marks, just some tiny marks, so I know where my wefts are, because I want to recreate the same wig again, and to do that, I need to know where the hair was. So, right, this is where I started, so I want to mark that. I want to mark where it goes around the back. where it goes around the ear. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in between each weft and mark how I space them. Because if I change the spacing, if I put them closer together, the wig's gonna get thicker and I'm gonna use more hair. If I put them further apart, the wig's gonna get finer and I'll use less hair. So if you like it just the way it is, you want to land those webs exactly where they were. Okay. Carefully undo all that pinning. I know, what a waste, right? Well, you just want to be able to see it and make sure you have enough hair, make sure you like the hair, make sure you like the style, so forth and so on before we put any glue on the doll. And this is what you saw in the Christmas video, um, where I basically did a few iterations of this pinning until we got it to look the way that our mommy wanted it to look. So there were a few times of pinning it on and pulling it off and pinning it on and pulling it back off until it was good. So you don't want to skip this step entirely. It is pretty important. Yeah, this will happen sometimes. The pins will break um, because the vinyl is so elastic that it likes to hold on to things, which is why rooting works, of course, because it's holding on to the hair. Um, now it wants to hold on to my pin. So make sure you carefully remove and dispose of any pins that you break. And there are wig pins out there. Um, they don't have these little colorful balls on them. These are sewing pins. The wig pins are all metal and there's a little bend in the top of it that is the head of the pin. So you won't have this problem if you're using wig pins. And you can get those from your beauty supply store. So you can see it goes around. 
the wefts are spaced. That's actually a bigger space than I meant to do, so I might close that one up a little bit. They're spaced out. So this is where the wig is gonna end. So all this is gonna be hanging out. So you wanna keep that in mind when you are styling the hair. And this is where the closure is gonna be. So now you have your wig plan and pattern. We're ready to glue.